Hey, welcome back to Homegrown Country Home Place, friends. How y'all doing today? Well, y'all, I'm out here in my leather shop, and um, I thought I'd bring y'all along and just do a quick video. I know it's been a long time, y'all, since I've done a video, and uh, I've just been busy doing a lot of different things. Um, I've been playing a lot of baseball this summer. Uh, we're still playing baseball. We're fixing to be through, I think, this uh, Saturday. We'll be wrapping it up. We're going to have a tournament and everything. Uh, Austin, he went to the uh, Dizzy Dean World Series this year. Also, the All-Star Games, he played in the All-Star Games, and uh, also got a chance to uh, play in the World Dizzy Dean World Series, so that was fun. Uh, good learning experience and everything, so we've been busy uh, doing a lot of baseball playing and everything, and uh, fix wrap that up. And, uh, but what I want to bring, bring y'all on day for is uh, I've been uh, working on a lot of knife sheaves and stuff like that. Uh, been keeping me pretty busy, but uh, I'm going to bring y'all along day and show you a few knives that I have. I don't think I've showed y'all. Um, let me see the first one right here. Y'all know I showed y'all. Let me see one video. Show y'all this uh, Rough Rider uh, Trapper style pocket knife. And uh, y'all, I tell you, for the, for the money, y'all, you cannot beat a Rough Rider and you get these through uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works and. Uh, I would recommend uh, them to you if you're ever up there in uh, Sevierville, Tennessee. We always like going up to the mountains, you know, every year and everything. And uh, uh, if you haven't ever stopped there, y'all, y'all stop there. And man, they got thousands and thousands of knives, you know. Pretty much anything you want. If you want a knife, you know, and I'm sure if something they don't have, they could, you know, order for you. But um, right there, I love that little knife right there. Um, so on that same subject there rough rider i went and purchased uh this little mini trapper knife so we get it focused there there you go and uh the reason why i buy some of these pocket knives y'all one thing they're great value and uh case like I say you know you can get the same style knives and you know through case but the, the amount of money you spend is going to be you know i don't know at least three times as much probably get the same knife and uh, so what I do you know I buy these rough rider knives if say a customer wants a particular knife sheath and I don't have a knife or don't have an idea you know exactly how to make that sheath you know I need something you know to uh, test fit it with and everything make sure that sheath is right I go and look you know and if I can find a pocket knife say like that right there for say 12 bucks or 15 I'm not sure what I paid for it uh, I go buy one of those and they I always be sure you know it's gonna have the same uh, size you no know, you know, specs and everything the overall length and the thickness and everything but um, let me just show you this knife right here it's just a little two blade trapper slip joint pocket knife and um, I tell you all if you, you can see the quality right there you know they, they do a good job buffing the knives and everything um, they got good action to them, good snap. And overall quality, y'all, is, you know, it may not be flawless, but for the money, it, it's pretty close to flawless. I mean, they do a really good job you know, making these knives. And uh, it's like they're actually, you know, fairly sharp, you know, out of the box. So that, that's one thing that kind of surprised me because I know some of the case knives I've been buying, they're not really that sharp, y'all, right out of the box. So uh, that might be something, you know, they they could work on on that part. But uh, here's another knife, y'all. Uh, this is, this kind of mimics a Buck 112 knife. And what I did, I refinished the handles on it and sanded the handles down that had a raised handle right in here for a grip, I guess but it didn't uh, like a buck 112 is not like that so i just sanded down the handles and restained it uh, this is like a, a lighter color if i'm not mistaken y'all this is gonna have oak handles on it and uh, i think i paid maybe 14 bucks for this knife i didn't get it through smoky mountain knife works uh, this is a clark sharp let me put my glass on here so i can tell y'all exactly what it says it says clark sharp stainless steel so it, it, it's a clark uh knife 
but it mimics like a buck 112. So, you know, I had a, had a customer wanting a, a sheath, uh, one of those. No, I'm sorry. Now, that's actually some of the sheaths I wanted to make for myself to put on my Etsy shop. Uh, that was not a customer. I've sold a few of these already. So, uh, I just want to show y'all that knife. And it's got, you no know, brass bolsters right there. Um, you know, overall, just for a little cheap knife, uh, pretty good. Uh, I think the Buck 112 was going to run maybe about, I can't remember, about 70 bucks. And I said, well, just for, you know, a, you know fitting a sheath, you know, test fit and everything. And it had basically the same dimensions and everything. And uh, the customer, one of the customers bought that, you know, left me a review talking about real happy about his, you know, sheath and everything. So that's just the way I do things, y'all. Uh, instead of going out there buying, the, if I can buy a, a, a knockoff knife, you know, just for making a sheath, you know, and I can save probably 60 bucks or whatever, that's what I'm gonna do. And it, so far, you know, uh, it's worked out real good for me. But there's sometimes y'all, y'all, you can't find one just like it and I, I go out there and buy whatever it is and uh, that's within reason y'all I don't go out there and pay two three hundred dollars for a knife just make one sheath but if it's a knife I know that you know I might be making several several more sheaths you know down the road I don't have no problem doing that y'all but uh, one in particular uh, one of my good customers in Georgia been ordering a lot of stuff from me he uh, he requested a, a sheath I had something for a Case Rust Lock pocket knife. And when he asked me about that, y'all, I didn't know anything about a Case Rust Lock. I never heard of one. Uh, they've been out, I think, since 2000. It's just something that just kind of went past the radar there. I didn't know anything about. But, uh, <clears throat> so I did a little research on it and stuff. And I said, well, I said, maybe one of my smaller sheets would work. And so I sent him one of my smaller sheets and, and he told me that, uh, <clears throat> that the sheath was a little bit too big. I said, well, I said, what I'll do, and he said, well, what he did, he went and bought a trapper knife, and it worked fine, you know, uh, it's a trapper sheath, and, and and he said he loved the sheath and everything, but he asked me if I could make one, you know, just for that uh, uh, rust lock, and I said, yeah. So I started looking around, and I seen there wasn't no, you know, aftermarket different ones, you know, that, you know, you had to buy the actual case rust locks. So that's what I did. And uh, this is what I bought right here, y'all. Let's show you that right there, get in focus. And now, what it does, it has this little lever right here. And uh, you take it, and I take my own, how a lot of people do, I take it and open it with my thumb. And it's got like a liner right here lock, right here, that locks your blade in place. Sit right there. That's what it looks like. Right there. It, I mean, it's a nice pocket knife, y'all. It's not my cup of tea, uh, as far as you know what I like. But it's it's different, you know. Uh, I guess case I don't make anything like that. And then to shut it, you know, just take your thumb, push over, push down on your blade. And that's what it looks like right there. And this knife's like three and a half inches. And let me get focused right there, up close right there. Let's say you take your thumb, just take it. So it's supposed to be, a, you know, where you can open and close with one hand. And let me just get a measurement here, y'all, for you. The blade. The actual blade itself uh, cutting edge is probably two little about two and three eighths inches and the overall length would be about mm, maybe about two and three quarter inches what it looks like so you know it, it's a nice little pocket knife and uh, I just got through making two sheaves uh, custom sheaves he uh, like horizontal style sheaths and he wanted initials on them he wanted to keep one for himself and give one to his uh, friend and uh, got them shipped out to him right now and he hasn't got them yet but uh, just want to show you that little pocket knife right there and uh, one thing I will say well, let me say this first I, I guess I need to tell you what model it is there it's the 
It's an amber bone, peach, seed, jig, rust lock. And let me give you that model number here. It's gonna be a six one, let's see, six one nine five three one. Let me just check it here on the blade. Six one nine five three. I'm sorry, L. It's six one nine five three L and it is a stainless steel blade. And uh, now the, the, the other model numbers, they if it's got like a bone handle, I think it's gonna be that model. But if it's gonna have like a wood uh, handle, I believe it's gonna be a different uh, model number on those. Um, but uh, the one thing I, I seen about this knife right off the bat, and that's the, that's the thing about, you know, if you order something, y'all, you don't never know what you're gonna get. That's about like leather. When I order my leather, sometimes I get good sides, sometimes my sides of leather is not quite as good. But, uh, I don't know if this camera will pick it up or not, but the uh, the liner on it on one side it's got a little crack in it on the back. Let me see if I can get that focused in here. Let me take a minute here and get this try to get that focused in, y'all, for y'all. Uh, okay, y'all. I don't think it's going to focus now for some reason. Maybe it's trying to focus on me. I'm not really sure. But uh, anyway, y'all, I'll just show you. Right back here, right in here, there's a little crack. You can see right. You see that little crack, y'all, right in here? That, to me, you know, if I was in person buying this knife, I, I would not buy it. I always check my knives out before I buy them, if I'm in person, obviously. But that there, I'll put back and ask for another knife. Now, that doesn't have no effect on this knife, but the case, uh, I don't know. Case, in my opinion, should never sent that knife out. You know, that, that should have been, in my opinion, it could have been better, because I, I got a case trapper and it is completely perfect you know it's, it's nothing wrong with it and uh <clears throat> that's a, that's a 90 dollar knife y'all and for 90 dollars you know you think you know they 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 do a little bit better job so uh I'll their the quality uh, control uh should be a little bit better you know letting knives like that go but uh like i say um i ordered this smoke mount knife works and like i say nothing on them uh, I'm sure they just, you know, pull their stock and, you know, ship them out. But if I was actually buying in person, like I said, I'd, I'd be sure that uh, the knife was, uh, you know, you know, pretty much flawless in my opinion. Uh, another thing, yeah, I know some people uh, talk about the blade, how it sits in here. Uh, sitting off to one side, some of them sits to the center. And you can see right there, mine actually sits off to the side. And that's another thing, you know, uh, I'm not really, it don't have no effect on anything, but, uh, and it, you know, like I say, I, I don't know if, you know, some gets lucky getting them straight, some don't. So this is a sits off the side. Um, but uh, overall though, the whole reason for this knife actually is, you know, making sheaths. And so it really don't bother me to a certain extent, but if I was a knife collector where I just want to, you know, knife, pristine condition or whatever that's definitely not a good quality control you know i did not you know wouldn't buy anything like that but enough of that y'all uh you can tell i'm kind of stickler about stuff uh especially when you're paying that much money you know you think it'd be a little bit better but anyway y'all that's uh that knife and um then i've i don't think i've showed you this little knife here <clears throat> little Sodbuster Junior knife. It's just gonna be a, a cheaper knife. Uh, I bought it also, you know, for uh, making knife sheaves and stuff. And uh, this particular one is the uh, just a stainless stainless steel blade. Uh, let's see if I can get that focus here for y'all. Y'all, this camera here, 
I don't like using this camera a lot of time. I'm gonna go back to my old camera I used several years ago because it don't have no kind of problem focusing. But uh, anyway, y'all, that's a little side buster uh, knife right there. It does not lock. It's just a slip joint style knife. And uh, I think it's about three and a half inches on that particular knife. Let's see here. Yeah, about three and a half inches. So um, I make shoes for them also. That's one of them right there that I keep it in. See that right there. And uh, today, well, actually, I started on yesterday and I finished it today. I was making a knife sheath for Boat 110. Uh, this style right here, I'm pretty sure I've showed y'all them right there. I make. And, uh, back of it. And all these sheaves like this, y'all, I'll put them on my Etsy uh, shop. And I'll leave a link uh, to my Etsy shop. Anybody, you know, want to go over and look, see what I got. And uh, anyway, y'all, made this particular one. And I, I done made, I don't know, maybe 10, at least 10, 11 of them. And this particular one, uh, it didn't pass my quality control. You know, I when I send stuff out, you know, um, I like having stuff exactly like I want it, you know. And uh, most people would look at this sheath, you uh, know, it's fine as far as the looks and everything, it's fine, real nice. And this is one of my favorite sheaths, y'all. Um, I, I, I got one I carry myself, and this particular one, I'll be carrying myself also. And I'll tell you why. All right, when I put the knife in, when I molded it, you know, everything seemed to be good. And then when I pulled the knife out, I felt just a little bit of resistance I didn't like. I said, man, what's going on? And on a buck knife, one of the pins right here they put through right here, they're pretty raised up. And on this particular sheath, I, instead of, uh, you know, I stitched it slightly different, y'all, than I, what I've ever done before. And I uh, put an extra stitch in top and bottom. <clears throat> well, that, that stitch, the extra stitch I put in, y'all, that little pin hangs on just a little bit. And it's not bad. It's not bad. But I can I can kind of feel it. So right. See, it's, it's actually getting better, y'all. But it's one of the things. You know, I I I, I could put that on my Etsy shop right there, y'all, and I'd sell it. And I, I'm sure the cubs be and happy as everything. But it just don't pass my inspections. That's how I'm kind of particular about stuff. But I just want to show y'all that little sheath right there. I just uh, inadvertently made me a, another sheath that I didn't realize, and because I changed something up slightly, and uh, I say you don't, I won't do that again, y'all. That's, that's, that's a learning lesson. But uh, let me see here. I've got another sheath, y'all, that uh, find it here. that I made for a customer. Uh, he had wanted a uh, metal clip on the back of his, uh, well actually he ordered one from me and he thought it had a uh, clip on it. You know, I tried to, you know, my pictures, they, they, they real good and everything. You can tell exactly the sheet you see, that's one you're gonna get y'all. And, um, but he said, well, I thought it was going to be a metal clip, but, you know, it's just a regular, you know, leather loop on the back. And he asked me if I could make one for a, uh, just for a Buck 110. And I said, yeah, I, I haven't ever made none with metal clip, but, you know, I made him one. And this is the first one I made him right here. This one right here. And uh, there's a metal clip on the back of it. And y'all, y'all can see right there, you know, you see how this comes down, this leather right here to cover the, uh, the metal, uh, clip. It's just a little, it's crooked. It came down a little bit crooked. You can see right here on the edge there, and it's, it's kind of off center. Well, y'all, you know, I couldn't send that guy that just because, you know, it was a little bit, you know, crooked and, and that bothered me. And, uh. So I made another one and I off, offset it. I, I made it a little crooked 
and then when I folded and everything molded it came out straight perfect so you know sometimes you can do your best you know that's the first one and I kind, of, I kind of hate when you got fudge stuff to, to make stuff work but sometimes that's what you got to do but um, I've got this sheath right here and it's, it's you know for buck 110 and I'll probably wind up uh, donating that sheath uh, to an auction or something like that for you know a, a good purpose my neighbor you know does something like that every year so I'll probably be donating this to him but you see I mean it's a perfect good sheath and nobody would ever know any difference you know if they wearing it but it's just one of the things that don't pass my quality control so it didn't go out um, now I will say this anytime you do something custom it's a learning you know it's a learning curve to it you got to make a pattern a new pattern for it you got to make you got to change things up and try to do something different y'all tell you that takes time sometimes and it <clears throat> it's sometimes it's burnt leather burnt time burnt material so it's to be like well that didn't work out y'all but that's why I, whenever i find a known good pattern something work minus this piece right here you know i thought i put an extra stitch and guess what it didn't work out for me today but uh anyway y'all the point of a lot of this is is uh you know, a lot of stuff that you do in leather work is going to be trial and error. And a good pattern is is very important, you know. You can do good work, but if your pattern's not 100%, you know, you're not going to be happy with it if you if you real, you know, particular about it, you know. But uh, I enjoy doing this leather work. Uh, like I say, I, I've been doing it, I can't remember now. It's probably get going on, probably getting closer to probably close to two years now and i've enjoyed every minute of it and uh, always something new to learn in a leather work is like like a, a, a blank canvas you know you can it ain't it ain't no limits what you can do with leather work it, it never gets boring and sometimes y'all i i can make a mistake and that mistake can be a good thing because it's, it's something i can learn from also sometimes a mistake can be something that you know with leather you can cover up sometimes a mistake and learn something from it and actually add say stamping or something to it and make it look nice and uh, i've learned that also you know a little scratch or something so, oh no i done scratched the sheath you know and uh, take a you know start stamping it and you had no intention to be hey man that looks good now and and, and you, you don't know it that it was scratched i don't know it you know what i'm saying it's all covered up so that's, that's a good thing about you know uh, being able to learn how to fix little mistakes and stuff like that things gonna happen that's another thing y'all doing leather work you got you know right now my fingernails are getting a little bit longer now i gotta keep them trimmed because leather work it don't take nothing to actually you know nick it or scratch it and you know when i send something to a customer you know it may not be 100% flawless. I try to. Some a lot of times they are. I mean, they 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 pretty flawless. But sometimes the leather itself have, when you get it, have like little uh, natural defects. You know, some people like that. You know, and probably some people don't. That's why when I make a sheath, y'all, and I put on Etsy, what you see is what you're gonna get. I'm not. I don't put that best sheath up there and and say order one and then you know I make one just like it. You know and it don't work that way when i dye leather i can dye leather you know the same sheet same leather everything and it'll turn out every single one of y'all is going to be different and that's that's another thing i like about leather work when you get a custom leather sheath it's always going to be different it may look almost the same but something's going to be different about it, it it'll never be identical um so that's what I like about it also and like I say this sheath right here I don't know if y'all can pick up on this right here let me see if I can get this to focus right here mmm yeah I don't think it can but anyway y'all y'all can see little uh, stretch marks in the leather here that's all natural you know that, that 
that's nothing you know you can't you can't take that out and uh, that, that's going to be part of the you know the leather and uh, and say this sheath right here this is one uh that i made and for whatever reason you know i made you know i can't tell you how many i done made a lot of them but this particular one if you look on the back y'all it didn't turn out completely like i wanted it it's a little bit offset. This belt loop right here is just a little bit offset. And uh, I didn't like it. So I'm not going to send that to the customer. That's one of them things that, you know, you know, I, you, can't, I, you can't say, well, you learn from it. It's just one of the things that happens sometimes. And uh, would that affect the way this uh, sheath carries this knife? Absolutely not. But that's how particular I am about stuff. You know, I don't want to send nobody anything that they're not going to be happy with. And with my name, get stamped on that sheath that means I'm proud that I made that sheath and I'm gonna make sure that you're happy as a customer when you get it there you go y'all y'all can kind of see the little markings right in there see it don't have no effect on the sheath itself but uh, this is just a little visual look some people may say that gives it character and I would agree you know it's natural leather but one thing about it, y'all, once you carry a sheet for a while, it's not gonna look it's not gonna look like it is when you first get it. You're gonna you're gonna bump it, you're gonna nick it, and it, it's it's gonna it's gonna build character as you wear that nice sheet. And you might be like, well man, I took that sheet. My, I was with my dad the first time I shot my, you know, first deer. Or my, you know, when me and my dad went hunting, I shot shot this uh ten point buck, you know and uh, I was wearing this sheath and you know things like that you know you know it's just uh things has a way and of having a story over time y'all and um, let me show you this right here here's a sheath right here similar to one I just showed you that's my sheath right there that I've been wearing you know back and forth you know and you can see right there you know it'll pick up you know wear and stuff over time it look completely different, you know, but it that's what's gonna happen, y'all, when you're wearing sheets, leather. It just uh gets you know, sometimes you they say like wine fine it gets better with time. You know, I don't know nothing about that because I don't drink wine, y'all. Uh but I, I take I take I take the word for it. But that's like leather. Over time it's gonna build character, build patina, it's gonna age. Um and another thing, y'all, I know I started this video out on my pocket knife, them showing different knives, so like that, and now I've got on my leather sheaths. But uh, another thing I, I like I like doing, y'all, is when uh, when I make a sheath, my sheaths probably got each sheath, y'all, depending on which one I'm making. You know, some got more time than others, but at the minimal, I got probably two to two and a half hours in each sheath I make. That's how much time I spend on these sheets, making sure that I give, you know, when I make something that's gonna be a good quality sheet. Uh, a lot of things behind the scene, a lot of people don't know about. The people's bought my sheets, so they don't know anything about, you know, what to do. Uh, and uh, I haven't really got in details and shown you exactly what I do, but uh, I oil the sheets after they've been dyed. I make sure they got a good coat. Uh, this uh, neat foot oil. And, uh, that just makes sure that dye that I put on that sheath doesn't, uh, you know, dry the leather out because it will to a certain extent. And the oil I put back into it was softened up. And then after that, I put at least four to probably six to eight coats. I mean, on some sheets. It depends on you know, what I'm trying to do with the sheets, how to get them looking, of a beeswax leather conditioner that I make myself. And uh, I put it on and it soaks in. So once that once that customer get that sheath, they're just not getting that sheath that's been put together. You know, it's been a lot of care and a lot of thought being put into it. And every sheath I make, y'all, uh, right now anyway, not in for foreseeable future anyway, everything I do is hand sewn. It's not done with no sewing machine. I take pride in that. And uh, I had one, y'all, I sewed and had one stitch that it bothered me and uh it was fine y'all it just ate something about this one stitch i took out i took my knife and 
my clippers I mean and I, I, I clipped the stitch and I started taking I took everything back apart y'all and uh, I re-sewed it and I was happy I was content with it the second time but uh, that's how much uh, pride and stuff I try to put in to my leather work uh, like I say I'm fairly new at it but when I make something you know, I pretty much guarantee you it's it's gonna be right, you know, and it's 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 gonna you know if it don't if it don't pass my inspection, then it don't leave here, you know. And uh so I do take pride in that and I told my wife, I said, you know what, I ain't never thought about it this way before. But I'm I probably sold now uh I live in North Mississippi, so I got I don't I don't well, I know I have I haven't sold any sheaves to anybody Except my, you know, my brothers, you know, they got sheaves, you know, from me. But as far as actually somebody buying, say, online, I'm not sold anything from uh, Miss, you know, from Mississippi and uh, Hawaii. I, I finally sold in Alaska, y'all, and I haven't really sat down. I'm gonna get me a map, y'all, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put everywhere that I've sold something from since I started my little Acer shop. And uh, I'm pretty much sure I've, I've hit almost all the states besides Hawaii and Mississippi. And uh, I can't tell you other ones, y'all. It, it's probably less than five, you know. So I told my wife, I said, you know what? That, that's something, you know. Um, sometimes, you know, a person can be famous, you know, and everybody knows their name, and everybody, uh, you know, say, well, you know, I, you know, everybody. In, knows me so I say you know what I ain't never thought about it this way but my name y'all you know it's stamped on each, each each of these sheaves when I send them out I say you know what one of these days them sheaves will be around for a long time and I might be a country boy from Mississippi and and not not popular at all but one of these days I'm I'm gonna be able to say hey I got a nice sheaf that's been you know somebody in every state my, my name has been in every state and somebody's wearing my nice shoes you know I, now that made me kind of feel good that you know being able to you know make something like that you know quality uh sheet that somebody can use and they'll last a long time you know and i, I can't tell you how long that uh, lasts but um uh, my brother uh he he got several of my shoes and he wears them and tests them for me and everything and no, no problem whatsoever, and I don't expect no problems, you know. Now things will wear out over time. That's just that's just normal, you know. But the great thing about a knife sheath, say a particular, say if it don't matter which one, that that the pretty much the only thing gonna wear out on these sheaths, y'all, is the thread. Thread will not last forever, and I do use the good quality uh, thread. I use a uh, rich uh, tiger thread and polyester that's what i like i got nylon thread but my favorite as far as hand sewing y'all that tiger thread you can't can't beat the tiger thread in my opinion it lays flat it does really good it's a braided thread really strong uh, it's made in germany and uh, you know that's that's my go-to thread now i've tried different ones uh, i tried main thread y'all and it's just it's all right y'all it's made in america but it's not my cup of tea in the end i like the tiger thread a lot better but uh you know it, it's a good feeling to be able to make something put pride in it you know when i was a mechanic you know i, I, I put a lot of pride in my work you know make sure that customers take care of it that's always you know i want i want the customer to be happy in the end and and that starts with me and that, that's why i look at it. it don't matter what i do it, it, it could be a woodwork something i've done woodwork you know if i'm content and happy with it I feel my customers are going to be happy with it because, like I say, I I just know what a, a good you no know, product looks like and what it should be, and um, and when I take that time, a lot of people say, "Well, man, you, you should have put a lot of time," you know. And sometimes I say, it's three hours. It could be three, three and a half hours. I mean, I spent. I made a, a holster for one of my friends, you know, and I, I probably I told him I probably spent 14, 15 hours on the holster, and. Um, you know i don't like really getting in a lot of stuff custom stuff because it really is it's, i put more time and effort in to make sure because it'd be like a one-off piece you know it's not something i'm going to be doing over and over and over and over again uh that's the thing about custom work it really don't pay for itself it might you know get you a customer but uh, 
that's what I like about you know doing doing sheaths for like poplar nice because I know I can make that one sheath then I can make some more make some more and I put them out there and people you know they'll buy them you know because they need them you know they want them you know and I don't think uh, knife sheaths y'all as popular as they used to be a lot of people don't carry knives I know a lot of times and like like the uh, clip the clips uh, clip on knives whatever I, I that's a going thing that's very popular but personally myself I've never liked them I've had a couple and I've got let me see here I got one right here a uh, little buck knife right here lock back <clears throat> got that right there and it's got a clip on it pocket clip and, you know I don't like I don't like them style knives, to be honest with you. Uh, I can't remember why, I, I mean, I bought this, but I, I can't remember why. I guess maybe I like the camouflage on it. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're nice, you know, one hand like operation, you know, open them up right there. You just real quick and everything. And this, this is a lot back. And uh, as far as, you know, carrying a knife, uh, if I was gonna carry this knife y'all in my pocket, I take that clip off. Uh, a lot of guys they like them clips, you know, slip them in the pocket and whatever. But I don't know. I just like the older traditional. I, mean, I love like like a buck one ten, just or a slip joint pocket knife. That's well, y'all. My camera cut off. It said I was talking too long, so I better finish the video. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, I just gonna show you that right there. Yeah, these are not my favorite knives right here. But um, anyway, like I said, I like the older style knives and stuff like that. Um, they just work good in the not no knife sheet and stuff like that. But y'all, hey, I rambled on way too long in this video. But uh, hey, I enjoy talking to y'all. Uh, it's been a long time since I made a video. And uh, I said, well, I better do a video. And I know this is a long winded video and probably, you know, most of you done left you know got tired of me rambling on about knives knives sheaves stuff like that but that's that's most of what i'm involved in right now you know uh doing doing my leather work stuff and enjoy it been enjoying it so i know i don't do a lot of videos on it because when i get in here my focus be on the sweet it's not trying to show y'all how to make a knife sheet how to do different things my focus mainly on making sure i take you know working what i'm doing making a good product so somebody sees it out there on my AC shop, whatever. And eventually, I lo I love getting my own website going and stuff where I can sell my stuff on a website. Also, I just something down the road that uh, I, I just have to consider. But in the meantime, I just uh, do my leather work and put it on Etsy, and uh, that way you know it can be put out there for a lot of different people to see and stuff. And, but uh, y'all, I enjoy uh, coming along talking y'all day. Uh, like I said, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. I know it's a pretty long video. I don't know how many minutes when I put this all together. I don't know how many minutes it's going to be. But uh, <clears throat> but I uh, appreciate y'all coming along. And like I say, if, uh, if y'all got any comments, any suggestions, anything to me, uh, just leave them down there. I like all comments and stuff like that. Uh, as long as there's not no bad comments, you know, no dirty comments and cuss me and anything like that. Thankfully, I've only had maybe one or two since I've been doing YouTube that, you know, people got kind of ugly, you know, for whatever reason, you know, they might have been having a bad day, you know, I know everybody has bad days, and I know some people don't like how I talk, probably some people love how I talk, you know, so it's, it's kind of funny, you know, some things, you know, I, I read comments, not, you know, be like, not about me necessarily, but other, you know, videos and stuff I'll be watching, they'll be like, you know, it, they get irritated by something that the uh, YouTuber be doing, ever how they talk, be, you know, doing something with the lips or the nose or <laughs> whatever, you know, the hands be doing something. Uh, I try not to aggravate none of y'all. <laughs> but I could, I could be aggravating somebody right now just talking about this, but I uh, hope y'all find some humor in that. But uh, hey, hey, appreciate y'all coming along. I hope y'all have had a good day and, uh, as always, friends, for my family years, y'all have a blessed day. And as always, y'all, y'all, I done messed this up. This should be a blooper right now. Y'all appreciate y'all coming along. And as always, friends, for my family years, y'all have a blessed day. We'll see you later.
Bye bye. Oh, 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 oh.